Today we're going to talk about big, oh, juicy bombs. Why is that soldier strapped to an explosive device? That's why Sid. <laughs> sure is a hairy fella. No, no, that's Scud, you idiot. That is Sid. <laughs> Let's go. It's a combat Carl. Allow me a brief moment here to plug my Witcher 3 Next Gen build series. We have a build for literally every single Witcher set and I've tried to make each one unique, not just the typical hoo-ha you see online. This build is potentially the most broken build that I've made. As it kind of came together, I realized that I feel like there is a bug in here somewhere that may get adjusted in a patch, but we'll talk about it all and break everything down anyway. So. I've seen a single bomb in this build do 8k plus damage. It's kind of broken. I actually checked the difficulty at one point because it is so dumb. I was like, there is no way this is death margin. I was like, huh, I guess it is. But it's it works and it works extremely well. And it's a few reasons why, and we'll kind of break down the main reasons and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. So the first thing is the new Manticore set bonuses, which especially the three out of six, so critical hit chance and critical hit damage also apply to bombs. So my logic here is that why not increase our critical hit chance and critical hit damage as much as we possibly can while also specking into the bomb line because there's a fair few skills that really benefit bombs and make them just exceptional damage dealers. The downside here obviously is that you only can carry a certain amount of bombs specifically because of the skill heavy artillery which triples our bomb damage which is absolutely huge but it halves the amount of bombs you can carry. So kind of with this build you'll probably be meditating after each fight but it's hilarious how well this works and because we're focusing on the alchemy line we have an extremely high amount of health i'm also increasing our health by certain skills and certain other effects and overall just in general this is very survivable without even trying to make a build that focuses on survivability i was wondering really what mutation to use for this build and i initially kind of thought maybe to use euphoria but because euphoria buffs your sword and sign intensity damage and we're not using swords or sign intensity it doesn't really fit really with this build so instead we went with metamorphosis so applying critical effects to opponents activates a random decoction for 120 seconds with no toxicity cost and this is where i think the bug occurs but it, it makes logical sense but i also don't know if this is supposed to happen so the way that this works is because when we're applying critical effects we get a random decoction applied right cool okay so the medical set now because of the new set bonuses will allow you to critical hit while using bombs okay so now when we use bombs and we use all of the bonuses that we have with bombs it will automatically apply additional decoctions to our kit and then you can use those bombs to even further buff yourself and your overall survivability and damage etc etc without any real actual investment and because this is an alchemy build we actually get benefits for the amount of decoction we have applied like increasing our vitality and all that kind of nonsense so in combat you throw out a bomb let's say a northern winds or a dancing star and when those actually critical hit which funnily enough they can critical hit on the tick damage that they do say for example like bombs on the fire damage tick i don't know if that's supposed to happen but it actually does seem to it does critical hit and then that'll just apply a decoction to you and it'll go up to a maximum of five decoctions and then you just kind of laugh and throw bombs at everyone while taking virtually very little damage if you do take damage just cast a quen and you you're fine if you do take damage you know most of the time you'll have ekimura decoction applied to you which damage doubt increases your regeneration anyway so you're going to heal that back plus we're running a lot of vitality regen on the gear itself so it's pretty hard to die with this build and once it all kind of comes together we'll break down everything now and go through all the nitty-gritty details so armor and weapons we're using the manticore set now we've already talked about the three out of six the six out of six a bonus just increases the ore charges with the alchemy item by one so you get a little bit extra for that for runes on the steel sword i did put preservation so armor table and grindstone bonuses never expire but funnily enough i kind of completely forgot to actually use it when recording all this b-roll so i forgot to actually apply that bonus anyway it was just for a little bit of extra armor because we're not using the swords for damage anyway but then it also kind of worked out that I didn't really need the armor anyway because you just don't die with this build. So anyway, we'll move on. <laughs> For the silver sword itself, I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to put on here because most of the runes don't really actually do anything that fits within what we're doing for this build but anyway i went with the prong along asian so when you do take damage your potion duration increases kind of fits the theme but it doesn't matter that much for the chest piece it does actually we went with deflection so armor deflects all arrows this is just a really great way to stop you from getting knocked out of the animation of like throwing a bomb or something like that so you don't ever really get those stagger effects so absolutely beneficial to have and just helps with survivability for this build and in all the other rune slots i've just slotted vitality regen because it's probably the best slot to put in there let's fly by some skills because i know looking at the watch time on these videos these are the parts where y'all disappear so we're gonna fly by these all right we're gonna go real quick 
height and tolerance, refreshment, steady aim so that when you are aiming, you get a little bit of time reduction, pyro technique so that every single bomb will now do damage, efficiency to increase the amount of bombs that you can carry, cluster bombs so you have that like stagger effect where the bombs will separate into bonus fragments, those fragments still damage. Hunter's Instinct is one we're going to stop and talk about for a second. When adrenaline points are at maximum critical hit damage against the target is increased by 100% because our bombs do apply critical hit damage, you get benefits from that and we're also buffing our adrenaline points in a couple of other ways. Acquired Tolerance, Tissue Transformation and Synergy as well as Killing Spree. So when your toxicity is above zero, you get an extra critical hit chance. We've already discussed why that is important. And in the general line, we're running four skills, Advanced Pyro Techniques so that damage dealt by explosions do generate adrenaline points. In Combat's Fire, so your bomb and special bolt effects are ignored by yourself. So you can stand in the middle of your bombs. Heavy Artillery, we've already talked about why we're using that. And I'm using Attack is the best defense. So each defensive action generates adrenaline points. Now this is beneficial because we don't attack. So we don't gain adrenaline points from you know using our sword strike. So we want to get those adrenaline points to max so we can use Hunter's Instinct. This is the way that we do that is by being defensive by using this kind of skill. All right, was that fast enough for you? Are you still here? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's talk about the bombs, decoctions and some general build tips for this build. Upgrading the bombs will increase the amount of damage that they do as well as the amount that you can carry. And that's partly why this build is really an end game build. Also because of the Manticore set itself. You can't get the Manticore set until you're into Blood and Wine. You could use the Ursine set and make something out of this build, but I would really just make this build for fun, right? This isn't a build I would be playing the game with, just me personally. So talking about bombs and the bombs that you would use for this build, the main one is Grape Shot. Now, Grape Shot's the max damage dealer. It's essentially just like a massive explosion that is going to be your primary damage dealer for this build. Because of that, you really want to save it for certain encounters when you do want to deal a maximum amount of damage to enemies. I wouldn't be trying to pop this too much, like unless you absolutely need to. I'm also a really big fan of Dancing Star, which applies a fiery explosion as well as like a burn effect. It does heaps of damage itself as well. So you get lots of benefits from that. That's what I've mostly used, especially in larger groups because of the fire effect that you do get. And speaking of larger groups, Northern Wind, which freezes everything in its additional effect. It also does a tick damage. So you get benefits from like the tick dealing damage as well as the initial effect of damage. It actually does a high amount of damage and freezes enemies that you can either finish off with a quick little sword jab or just like let the tick damage kill them. The other bombs like Moon Dust, etc., are more situational. I wouldn't really be using them unless you absolutely need to, like you run out of your other bombs. Salmon can be pretty good good because of like the stun effect that it kind of does with like the blinding or sometimes use that for the most part though they are pretty situational decoctions is another story now it's worth noting here that metamorphosis the effect that we're using it will only activate decoctions that you have crafted so meaning the decoctions you have in your inventory so only craft decoctions that are actually valuable to you and this build we'll go through the main decoctions very quickly but obviously you can use whichever ones that you like so night raid so Geralt's max vitality is increased for every foe that he kills i'm also using chort so it provides complete resistance to the stagger effect cockatrice is hugely important and after you have meditated i would always just apply this effect even before combat just yourself so all alchemical creations can be used one additional time. I'm also using Grave Hag, so each foe slain accelerates vitality regen for the duration of the fight. Ekimara was already discussed to increase your vitality regen. Also using Catacane to increase your critical hit chance. Wyvern isn't bad, but I wouldn't really use it for this build. It kind of just like helps you out if you do use some of your actual attacks for attack power. And Water Hag, so damage dealt is increased when vitality is at maximum, which it kind of will be for the most part. And you could also just, you know, equip this one outside of having to use the Metamorphosis because you will get that extra bit of damage potentially from that. But that, my friends, is the bomb build. If you want me to do any others, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching this video. Till the end, thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Noz. I hope you have a great day.